you guys can see from the look of it overall this is a very old style reel the only upgrades that you see here is a narrow spool made by Tiburon. I picked up the extra narrow just because I was looking for something for yo-yo purpose. To show you how narrow this reel looks like, I'm gonna bring out two other reels, which is a Pen 25N and the 8XN. And looking at the two, the only narrow one that is very similar to this Tiburon frame is just a little bit more narrow, which is this 8XN, super small reel. If you can see the diameter of the sizes, and if you look between this one and the 25 narrow, you can see there's a little bit more width on the 25 narrow between the two. So two things we wanna do before we get started, remove this old line, tear down the reel to clean it all out. It just has a lot of grime everywhere, it's been well used. I'm sure he took care of it, but we just wanna make sure that we start fresh from where we wanna take care of it from here on out. So let's get started with removing the line from the spool. So I got this all unspooled here and just taking a look at it now, we're gonna go ahead and remove everything that we need, clean the, this entire reel. You can see lots of dirt, lots of buildup on this. So let's start taking everything off. Uh, there was a user that was mentioning about my tools that I was using for my Shimano Talica video. And he said, you know, get some better upgraded tools. Weera and Weeha ended up with this screwdriver that I got on Amazon, which is a Vessel brand. And these are JIS standard tips, which is still very similar to the Philips, just for Japanese industry standards. I believe that's what it was referring to. It does give a better bite and it does have a narrow shank that does fit between the walls of the Talca. So I'll do a breakdown on the 16 for that one. And we'll go from there on it too. Kind of see everything in there, all brass gears. Wow, it's really pretty. built slides instead of just pops right off it slides through it's pressure fitted and it's concaved on the milling so that uh, I might need something with a little bit better grip there let's take off this trusty pen tool just a little bit of grit on this Crescent. So this whole entire housing 
holds everything up here, right? Um, you know, we're gonna take all this, we're gonna clean it down, re-grease everything here. I'm just trying to look at it right here. See what we need to do because you we would take off these four screws to start removing all the actual gear parts for it. Still like big chunks right there that, that looks like um it is older grease in there. Hold this part here because it's gonna spring and release everything. So I'm gonna hold it with two fingers right here. I should probably wear gloves for this, but let's just carry on. There we go, I can feel it trying to pop right off on the back side. Hmm, so this inner ones, if I remember that correctly, the inner ones has the shank that's blank and only threaded at the tip. And that's the two inner ones. The bottom ones are fully threaded or the ones closer to the, the handle. this one it's a long screw all right there we go single bearing inside two springs to hold it in place. And there's my main gear with my stacks. So let's look a bit at these drag stacks too. I better make sure I put this together with the spring. So I'm gonna lose this little tiny big spring. <clears throat> Trying to do it without having greasy hands. First washer. Looks like it was greased already. Whoa, how many drag plates is that? All right. Yep, it is. It's five. Wow. Beast. Let's put this all over here. I wonder. I was telling the guy who I bought it from, I was like, man, this thing has some beef behind it. Could definitely go for a cleaning on it. You see it's spotty in there, if that's the word. So we're gonna go ahead and put everything into a jar, clean all this up and go from there. All right, so I have the gears soaking in a jar of WD-40 right now. And I was just gonna go ahead and remove this plate cover. Um, there's a little tool I have for my gaming controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all of these up. So 
So this is just a close up of all the parts cleaned out. Just gonna go through it slowly. Uh, the plate covers, if you can see this here, um, cleaned out pretty thoroughly. Inside and out, removed all the old grease. Gonna try to put in new grease after this. So same thing with the other side. Just going through some of it here. Took down as much as of it of all the old grease and any residue that built up over time as much as possible. And I did this by placing it in a container filled with penetrating oil and just let it dissolve all the old grease, scrubbed out where I could, and that was pretty much it. Same thing with the handle, if you guys remembered how it looked like. Um, you know, you can't get it to a mirror polish unless I have a buffing compound wheel or something similar, but everything's still good. Just got it nice and cleaned as much as I can. So even the two plates, eh, you know, nothing really fancy. You don't need to do much to this. I just, I'm not, I'm not doing this for like a complete renovation rebuild. Just doing it to re-grease everything and make sure that it's as clean as possible. There's little bits of rust in it on certain areas. What I'm going to do is just layer it up with a thin coating of grease and that should be good to go. Here's the gear. You know, you're not able to polish this all the way up, but just to clean it as much as we can, same way.
All right, there you have it. Um, fully taken down, cleaned, where I degreased it, and then I applied new grease on this. Um, I used Yamaha lube, and I used a little bit of pen precision oil wherever I needed, and that's about it. All I'm missing is two screws. I got one screw right here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a replica of it if I don't order it directly from Penn and I'm just gonna be able to put it on the other side of it. So that's about it. I greased every single screw before I placed it on. I greased uh, the crevices around the ring and everything internally. Um, from free spool, can't really see, but right there, a little bit of movement. That's my, me holding on the spool, and that's about it. So let's go on to the next part of this. Going for 30 pound mono on this, and going to spool it all the way up to the top. 30 pound test Iserline Triple X to the brim. Let's go yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> 